Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I'll be talking about the book Treatise on the Love of God by St. Francis de Sales. The book was first published in 1616 and so that was seven years after the introduction to the devout life which is also a famous book by St. Francis de Sales. And um, I've already made a video about that book. And in that book, I said that the author addressed his readers as Philothea. And um, in this book, the treatise on the love of God, he says that uh, there were men who didn't want to read the book because it was addressed to a female. And so in this book now, he addresses the readers as Theodemus, which is the human spirit that desires to make progress in holy love. And he says explicitly, that he addresses both men and women that way. First, I'd like to talk about what St. Francis writes on the nature of love, and he defines love by saying that, quote, love then, to speak distinctly and precisely, is no other thing than the movement, effusion, and advancement of the heart towards good. Hatred separates us, and love brings us into one. The end then of love is no other thing than the union of the lover and the thing loved. He says that there are two types of love. The first one is uh, willing the good of the other and the second one is expecting something from him which is also a form of love. Another differentiation that can be made is between effective love and effective love. The first one, effective love, is exercised by internal acts such as prayer, whereas effective love is exercised outside oneself by external acts of the virtues. Another thing that I found interesting is when St. Francis explains that there is a difference between loving God because of yourself and loving God only because of yourself, the latter being a great sacrilege. So it's okay to love God for selfish reasons as long as you don't love him only for selfish reasons. Then St. Francis also writes that all love that we have for God comes from him and also everything that we do for God is a grace from God. And I've once heard someone compare this to a mother who gives her child money to, to buy her a present. Technically the child could keep the money so if he or she decides to buy a present that would still be an act of free will but the money for the present comes from the mother. After that, St. Francis also explains how to discern whether one has perfect or imperfect love or how to know if we love enough. He writes that who does not desire to love God more doesn't love him enough and a sign that we truly love God is when we love him equal in all things, meaning that we love him equally when we suffer and when we're having a good time. He compares this with drinking water as you would not care whether the water you want is served in gold or in glass as you only want to drink the water anyways. And I'd like to read a quote from the book where St. Francis explains how desire, hope, hatred, and all other passions presuppose love. Love being the first complacency which we take in good, as we shall presently show, it of course precedes desire, and indeed, what other thing do we desire but that which we love? It precedes delectation, for how could we rejoice in the enjoyment of a thing if we loved it not? It precedes hope, for we hope only for the good which we love. It precedes hatred, for we hate not evil, except for the love we have for good. Nor is evil evil, but because it is contrary to good. And, Theodemus, it is the same with all the other passions and affections, for they all proceed from love as from their source and root. And with this quote, last week's video about the four loves by C.S. Lewis might make more sense because there C.S. Lewis said that to wish to be safe from the dangers of love would be to wish for damnation. And as we just heard, love is much more than being in love or even more than the four loves C.S. Lewis talks about because, for example, there would be no fear if there was no love as we only fear because we are afraid to lose something we love. That could, for example, be our physical safety or also our social status that we fear to lose through humiliation. And wishing to have a heart of stone to be able to brush off those situations will be to wish to not have love, which, is ex which as explained in the last video, equals damnation. St. Francis also talks about sin and grace, and here he explains that humans have received more graces through Jesus saving us than we would have ever received through Adam's innocence. 
as he also explains the difference between mortal sin and venial sin. He says that mortal sin is when we prefer sin over God, whereas venial sin is when we get overly lost in earthly things. So venial sin, contrary to mortal sin, doesn't put us out of charity. Another thing that I found interesting was when St. Francis said that if we do something for several good motives, we have to rank them, otherwise we sin. So if we do something, for example, to help our neighbor and because we love God, we have to rank those motives by saying that doing it for the love of God is more important than doing it because of our neighbor. And St. Francis also writes in what order God gives us graces, quote, for the divine goodness gives glory after merits, merits after charity, charity after penitence, penitence after obedience to vocation, obedience to vocation after vocation itself, and vocation after our Savior's redemption. St. Francis also talks a little bit about knowledge, for example, in what way it is connected with love. He explains that knowledge gives birth, but not measure to love, meaning that, for example, if we read spiritual books, that might start love for God, but it does not determine the intensity of that love. And there is also a quote on knowledge that I'd like to read, because I found it interesting to think about. For with us, things easily known are easily despised, but that which surpasses the highest powers of our spirit by how much it is greater to be known, by so much it excites a greater admiration in us. Another portion of the book is dedicated to prayer, and here St. Francis explains the differences between thought, prayer, meditation, and contemplation. He says that every meditation is thought, but not every thought is meditation, as there are thoughts we have without any aim, whereas with meditation, we think in order to make ourselves love the thing we meditate on. Prayer is named meditation until it has produced the honey of devotion, and then it is converted into contemplation. The desire we have to obtain divine love makes us meditate, but love obtained makes us contemplate. The author writes that we should not think and worry about how we pray, because there will be like a bride looking at her wedding ring without looking on the bridegroom who gave it to her. And he also explains that someone who is praying and who notices that he is praying is not perfectly attentive to his prayer, because he looks on himself and not on God. And that's actually something that St. Teresa of Avila said in her interior castle. I think that was pretty similar, that when we pray to just not worry about how we pray, to just focus on praying and focus on talking to God. Or as St. Francis also says, that we should delight in praying because of the beauty of God and not because of the pleasure praying gives us. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. To be honest, the book was very informative, but it was very difficult to read. So the, the problem was that St. Francis used very abstract and difficult concepts and didn't really explain them. For example, the first sentence in the book was, union and distinction makes order, order produces agreement and proportion, and agreement in complete and finished things make beauty. And he didn't explain what that means, he just continued with other topics. So um, it might be necessary to read certain sentences two times, three times, or even more to understand them. But um, to be honest, I felt, when, when I read the book, I felt like I didn't understand anything. And then I looked at my notes and I was surprised by how much I learned from the, from the book, even though I had the feeling that I didn't understand anything from it. So when it comes to my rating, I think I would have to give it a double rating. Regarding the reading experience, it was extremely difficult to read. It was probably the most difficult book to read that I have read so far. But I think that if one actually took the time and read every sentence three times, it would be unbelievably informative. So in terms of reading experience, I would give the book a 3 out of 10 because it was horribly difficult to understand. And in terms of its content, I tend towards a 10 out of 10. But I'm not sure because I didn't understand everything that St. Francis talked about. That's been it for today. See you next week. God bless and bye!